Today, we're going to be looking at uh, a common use case in Web3, which we refer to as document pinning. Um, document pinning is uh, when you need um, to take a data object of some type um, that is stored in an external storage location, um, and you need to refer to it on chain without putting the data itself on chain while making sure that the state of the data object the owner of the data object um, and sort of the point in time that that object was instantiated is captured immutably um, while being reconcilable um, to multiple different parties um, in your blockchain network, right? The idea is data exists off chain. I don't want to put the data directly on chain, both for performance reasons, as well as for privacy and security reasons. So I need to find a way to abstract um, the data um, into a proof that I can put on the chain that everybody can use to then go and retrieve the data or to verify that the data that they have matches what it was when it was originated. Um, we're going to use the Kaleido platform today to show this. Um, the Kaleido platform um, is a full stack suite of Web3 development tools and services that takes everything from the nodes themselves up to the middleware and even as high as um, the, the asset modeling stack or um, the network configuration stack for off-chain data. Um, and it puts it all together into one box, making it extremely easy um, to provision services dynamically to meet the needs of your use case while leveraging a common API surface um, so you don't have to recreate the wheel every time you go to develop. Um, for document pinning specifically, we're going to look at four key steps. The first step, we're going to upload the data um, to, uh, to make Firefly aware of it, which is Kaleido's middleware component, which handles the data storage. Um, the second thing we're going to do is we are going to deploy a smart contract um, through which we are going to actually store the state um, of the data object that we uploaded in the first step. Um, once we have that smart contract, we're going to use the asset manager service, um, which has a really powerful workflow um, orchestration tool. We refer to them as TAS. We're going to use TAS to um, actually mint um, a token against the contract that we deploy with a bit of metadata containing um, the proof of the data that was uploaded in the first step. And in the fourth step, we're going to show how we can automatically index um, based on the events that are emitted from that transaction, um, the data that matters to us about the token. Um, and we can then automatically retrieve um, the proof contained within the token itself download that data um, and make it available to our applications. Um, we're going to try to do this not just from a single party perspective, but from a multi-party perspective to show how the Kaleido stack can help to enable us, not just for one party in what we like to call gateway mode, pointing and shooting at a blockchain, but also in the much more difficult multi-party context, wherein there are different identities attempting to interact with the data. Um, so we're going to start off in Firefly. So Hyperledger Firefly, as I mentioned before, is a, a middleware component that Kaleido leverages as its Web3 brain or engine. We can see here in activity, um, the timeline is a really great view just to demonstrate all of the rich bits of off-chain and on-chain data that Firefly is correlating together for us um, to give us a seamless development environment um, and to give us all of the context required from the Web3 end of things to make decisions for our applications. One part of Firefly that's extremely powerful is its interfaces to support um, the uploading of data objects and then the publishing of data objects to a network. Now you can publish to a network leveraging IPFS, which is a publicly accessible um, endpoint for anybody uh, participating either in the public IPFS network of your choosing or in a private IPFS network in the case that you're leveraging Kaleido to run one of those. But the data manager of Kaleido also has a private data manager component that enables these bits of information to be backed up to the cloud storage location of your choosing, um, and then also um, directly uh, messaged or exchanged um, from point to point between members of an established network. Today, we're going to leverage IPFS for the public option, but if you're interested in the latter, especially for enterprise use cases where privacy is top of mind, we'd love to talk to you about that. To do this, we're going to go to upload. I have a file over here that I've already got ready. Oh. Excuse me, we're going to grab this PDF, drag and drop. Sample PDF, really simple, but we're going to assign a path within the data storage component of Firefly. Um, these paths provide a really helpful semantic just to be able to retrieve data and contextualize data for your apps leveraging our API surface. When we upload this, we'll see that we've created a new folder for ourselves called sample. And we see that the platform 
has returned back a unique identifier for this now um, blob storage item that exists within the blob storage of the Firefly service itself. This unique identifier is what we can now reference um, to send or to push this information out um, to other members of our network, so either publicly or privately. So we're going to come back into this in a minute, but just keep in mind we've made the platform aware of this bit of data. And also keep in mind that although I did this via the UI, everything that I'm showing you today is API enabled, just like our entire platform is. So there's a data endpoint right here wherein you can provide um, the same inputs from your application um, and you'll retrieve back the same identifier that we see served very cleanly within the UI here. Now for the second step, we need a contract, right? So in order to actually store the state of data on a blockchain, you need a contract and a parameter within that contract through which you can store that state. Today, we're going to leverage a 721 contract, which is one of multiple different standards that Collider provides out of the box. So we're going to call this um, doc pinning is the name of the token. We'll throw a 721 in there for context, and we'll just give it an arbitrary um, symbol right there. Keep in mind with Kaleido's um, smart contract manager here, this user interface is really fun to look at. Um, and it's really helpful just to quick start and get things moving. Um, but there are a lot of advanced options here um, related to importing files directly from GitHub, using a Solidity file itself, or even teaching the platform about existing ABI or bytecode um, in the case that you've pre-compiled that, or maybe even in the case that a contract already exists, the platform is extremely flexible and being able to understand and speak to any type of Solidity contract that will compile successfully um, across different chain ecosystems. We are going to give this contract a name. I'm going to call it document pinning um, ERC721. We're going to store this within a path, my ERC path here, and we're going to click create. In a few seconds within the actions tab, um, what we'll see when we do a little bit of a refresh here, just to get some freshness in our in our um, app, um, is that the, the build here has been um, stored and we can now go about um, actually deploying this build to a specific chain that we've defined through our platform. Now, the platform leverages Firefly um, as an intermediary to process and submit transactions um, to a specific chain. So we'll see here, when it asks us to deploy a specific smart contract, we're going to be prompted to select the Firefly service that we want to deploy it through, which specifies the exact chain endpoints that we care about. We're also going to use it for um, the specification of the wallet that's going to be used for the deployment action. When we click deploy here, we're going to be able to come back down to actions. We'll see that this deployment action is pending, and then hopefully in a couple of seconds, we'll see that this moves to succeeded. Fantastic. So now that it's succeeded, we can see that we've returned back a unique address on chain that we can use to store the state of the document um, that we're hoping to pin um, to the blockchain. The last thing we need to do though, um, even though this has been deployed to the chain, what's really helpful that the platform provides out of the box and really helpful from a development perspective um, is the ability to actually create an API endpoint for a specific address that exists on chain. So if we come in, we're gonna take this next step here. We're gonna specify this is the contract that I care about right here. So tell me about the ABI of the contract, teach me about the code, right? And then teach me about the address, secondly, right? So if I'm creating an API, I need to know what functions am I responsible for replicating? And then lastly, where on chain am I pointing at? So when we look at this, we're gonna do doc pinning, excuse me, typo doc pinning 721-API. This is going to be important in a couple of steps when we actually go to invoke these functions. We're going to create it in that member one Firefly service, and then we're going to click create here. This should be pretty quick. Um, this is a web two action, so we don't have to wait on a block period or anything like that asynchronous. So when we click into this, hopefully in a second, um, this API endpoint will be created successfully. And we can click into the view of the API endpoint right here. And we can see that first and foremost, it's mapped one-to-one -to, -one to an on-chain address that we just deployed. And then secondly, there's a Swagger interface that's been exposed to describe the API um, methods and functions that you can use to interact with that particular address. This, of course, is derived from the ABI of the contract. Um, 
makes it really easy for ad hoc development against that contract interface. <laughs> so now we've done two things. We've uploaded the data to Firefly. So Firefly has stored the data object itself and its own storage, blob storage component, assigned a unique identifier to it so it knows what to call it. Um, we've also now deployed a smart contract to Firefly. If we go to the timeline here, we can see that a couple of seconds ago, um, we had uh, sort of that deployment action um, take place right here, contract deploy. Um, now we're gonna move up to the asset manager service. Now I'm gonna stay with member one for now. There is a member two here, it'll become relevant in a moment. Um, but the asset manager service is a really powerful tool that Kaleido provides, um, which exists to do um, mainly uh, to, to exist as an off-chain um, data model to describe and to contextualize and to track the state of assets that exist um, within the context of your Web3 applications. So we see this commonly used within financial services, but also in other industries such as healthcare and oil and gas, wherein records that exist on-chain um, are not as simple as traditional Web2 records or assets in that they exist as a row in a database. Um, they exist as um, often uh, complex relational items that are interdependent upon other on-chain assets and ultimately asynchronous in nature, meaning that um, the asynchronous nature of blockchain makes it difficult to track the state of an asset at a specific time, given that it may have one smart contract tied to it or many, it may have one data object tied to it or many, it may require labels or policies to be executed alongside of it. All of that complexity that comes with modeling an asset that exists on chain, this service right here provides a data model to help you to store it. Um, it's, it's optimized for performance so that you can do things like track um, non-fungible, fungible, or even um, private um, encrypted um, pools of value tied to an asset. It can track data objects tied to an asset transfers, and it can then automatically transfer or track balances um, derived from transfers tied to an asset as well. Um, the thing that we're going to use today, and what I referenced in the beginning, is this automation section um, of the asset manager, which has a really powerful workflow orchestration tool, um, which we call, we call these tasks. So tasks are a way of defining a series of steps using the platform services that Kaleido provides, in addition to a number of other tools derived from various open source components, um, to stitch together common activities that need to be uh, correlated with one another or associated with one another um, uh, for the purpose of your use case, right? So we have three tasks that we've pre-built today for this demo. One of them is to create the NFT. So the create NFT task is actually going to be the one that mints the NFT, referencing the data object that we uploaded in the first step um, and placing the um, subsequent proof that's created um, into the URI parameter of the token. The second step is an index step, um, which is going to be triggered by an event on the blockchain automatically. And it's going to write information about what happened on the blockchain, such as the token ID, balance changes, things like that into our data model. And then lastly, we have a task really lightweight that's just here to show how Kaleido's IPFS service and API endpoint associated with it, both for public and for private, can be used to just quickly actually download the data itself at the end of our flow. So if we come in to create NFT, this is our first task. If we look at the builder here, we'll notice that there it's, it's a nice, almost low code um, environment. Um, to build different flows, but it's also, uh, it's rooted in this YAML um, on, on this, this panel right here, which we find is oftentimes what people use once they familiarize themselves with the stack. Uh, it's also very convenient just for copying and pasting um, tasks or for making um, and store, making edits in a more um, CICD oriented fashion um, that developers are used to within their systems. So with this, because we're kicking off the flow, it's going to expect a couple of inputs that are going to be used in these tasks. So these tasks are going to publish um, the data object in Firefly, which currently just exists within the private storage, uh, blob storage of member one. It's going to publish it to the rest of the network, which is going to actually send it into IPFS and capture the result. It's going to format the result of that into an NFT URI that we can use to retrieve the data subsequently. Then it's going to mint an actual token um, with the formatted result within the URI. And lastly, it's going to update the data model. 
So pending success, it's going to say we have a new item that exists within this universe. There's a record of it here at this address, um, and we're going to wait to see what happens to it um, in subsequent steps. So on the right here, a couple of inputs. First one, Firefly service. Which Firefly service do we care about? The second one, API name. This is where we're going to have to make a slight switch. So you'll notice a couple of steps ago, if I quickly duplicate this tab, I'm going to actually come into my Firefly service where I can retrieve the doc pinning 712 API right here, this name that I created um, a couple of minutes ago. We're going to use this name to pass through. This step at the top is going to use that API name to retrieve the on-chain address, and it's going to reference that as a variable in the subsequent requests. We're going to go um, now to our wallet service, which is where we have four member one. We have the key that was actually used to deploy the contract, so that's going to be our signing key. And then we're going to go ahead and pick up another arbitrary key that we can use just to, to mint the actual token to. In this case, I'm going to use member two's org key um, to mint it to. Um, and then lastly, here's this data ID. So this is an old one right here. We're going to want to replace this. If we remember um, in the first step, we've already made Firefly aware and it's already storing that bit of data for us in blob storage. So if we come to off chain and we come back down to data, um, the one that was just uploaded right here, we're going to take that ID um, and we're going to pass that through here because when it goes to publish, it's going to know exactly which data object we're talking about. Um, it's going to make that available. Just as a reminder, that was a PDF, I believe, called sample PDF. So keep that in mind as we move through these steps. When I click evaluate, um, we'll see that oh, we're going to have to fix that data ID. It looks like we pulled from the wrong one. I'm going to come back in here, go to files, and we're going to pass this ID instead. I believe I needed that one. Um, when we come through here, um, we're going to see that uh, each of these steps has its own um, pass or fail or not run is typically what happens if your task is oriented to stop things as it moves through. Um, as you can see from that last step, if there is an error, it will really quickly tell you exactly what's wrong. Um, and you can reconcile it. In that case, um, I referenced the incorrect data object. Um, so the actual hash associated with it, the blob hash was non-existent um, in the database. So I had to reference the right one. So now that we have the correct data object referenced, we get success all the way through. Um, now, if we go to our data model, we'll see within assets that a few seconds ago, a new asset has been created uh, called new asset and then the address of the contract. This is a semantic that I came up with just by the nature of um, the uh, use case um, that we're attempting to do here. But there's not a lot of information, right? It's pretty much just a placeholder um, that said something happened. We're going to call it this, and we're going to wait to hear more information about the on-chain address um, of the NFTs, the token IDs, things of that nature. Now, if we come back down to the bottom, what I really want to do within tasks here, what I really want to do is automatically listen for information about that activity finishing, right? So once that NFT is minted, um, I want to know about it. And when I know about it, I want to go and grab the URI, right? Because that's where the data that I care about is, right? Especially if I'm another party, um, I want to be able to track that, retrieve uh, the payload once it becomes available of the event, um, filter the event, based on the type of event it is to make sure that I care about it and then go and grab that URI. So that's where we have this index transfer task built out, which again, leverages the constructs of Kaleido services, mainly Firefly, as well as some JSON auto templating um, to say, given a specific event, um, I'm gonna format the response or the contents of that event that Firefly is making available to my task. I'm gonna parse it. Um, and ultimately, I'm going to update my data model with information about that token and any balances that have changed once that token has been minted. All of this gets kicked off through what we call a Firefly listener. So in this case, we're going to come back here in a second. I have this one active. I do just want to go ahead and delete this one just so I can show you sort of a new life cycle of what it looks like to create these. So if I create a listener called NFT listener, you're going to be prompted to say, um, given a certain type of event, which task do you want to invoke, right? So this is a linkage between an on-chain event and some bit of logic that you want to run off-chain. Which Firefly service are we pointing at? Which smart contract manager? 
And then ultimately it's going to ask you for which specific contract, just so that it can make sure that you're talking about, or that it understands the specific types of events that it could potentially be expected to filter for. So you'll see here that the ABI is populated right here. Um, so it's going to listen to any event that matches the specs of this API um, or ABI contained right here. And then we're going to, at the bottom, we're going to pass through newest as the first event, just so that our listener doesn't try to pick up things that have already happened on the chain. So if we click create here, um, we have a new listener, which is supposed to invoke the task, the indexing task, whenever something new happens. Now, if we come back into our create NFT task and we invoke this again, that's just going to mint a new NFT um, within the platform than our asset manager. But this time it should pick things up, right? Um, it should use this new listener to pick up information and context uh, about the NFT that's been created. Um, and it should use um, the um, content of the event itself to populate the data model. So if we come down to what we call invocations, we can see a couple of seconds ago, here's an invocation, two invocations of this index transfer based off of two events that were received um, from the blockchain record. Then if we go into our data model, we can see here that this asset that was updated a couple of seconds ago now has a record of not, not just one, but now two tokens, both from the first step and the second step here um, at token indexes of zero and of one. Now, this one right here, we're going to click into this just to see really quickly that um, we've updated the URI um, within our data model um, to store the actual value that's stored on chain here so that this can be easily retrievable. And if we use um, this CID that was stored in the URI on chain, um, we can copy that and we can come back down into this super lightweight task that we call get IPFS data. We can pass this through here and we can actually evaluate um, the data itself, and we can get back the raw, raw file right there. Um, so this demonstrates how um, from start to finish, we can invoke a smart contract by referencing some bit of data that we've made Firefly aware of um, using the identifier of that Firefly object. After it gets published, it's been sent to IPFS, we've stored a CID, um, for that data in IPFS that can then be attached to the URI parameter of a token smart contract, um, which other members of the network can listen to, um, can store themselves within their data model as they see fit, and they can ultimately use to retrieve the raw data itself. Now, just to prove that this doesn't only work um, in a case where um, member one is, is an isolated party, which isn't very realistic, we're going to come over into member two. I'm going to go ahead and just show you guys that there's also a listener that's been stood up in member two's asset manager service, which is a completely separate service over here. Um, it's a listener that's been set up. There's also within tasks, an index transfer task, which I went ahead and created before this demo, mm -hmm. which is running the same bit of logic. Um, and within the asset manager itself, we can see that six minutes ago, believe it or not, here are the same records. And then two minutes ago, here are the updated records of the NFTs that match what member one was seeing. So if we go into the URI of this one and we were to copy that, you'll notice that that CID right there, GT6P is the same CID as the NFT um, according to number one that was stored within the asset model um, over here, GT6P. So this hopefully demonstrates for you all how Kaleidos platform can be leveraged um, to establish a document pending workflow. Um, wherein the, the document can be referenced within a token smart contract. But um, there are a lot of different ways to do this. Um, the platform is not designed to do this in just one way. Um, it's designed to be flexible. So if you want to reference within the URI of that token smart contract, um, a private identifier or potentially an asymmetrically encrypted identifier that only certain parties um, can reconcile. Firefly provides out-of-the-box private messaging endpoints that generate just that type of proof that you can use to um, broadcast and communicate information across a network to only particular parties that you desire to talk to, as opposed to making a publicly accessible data object through IPFS, um, the, the thing that you store within that URI. Similarly, um, if the contract that you want to use isn't necessarily a token, that's completely fine. It does not have to be a token. That's just one example of many um, smart contracts 
at the end of the day, all that needs to happen um, is you need to have a parameter within a smart contract on chain. And Kaleido's smart contract manager is capable of, as long as it compiles and its solidity, um, we can um, create an API endpoint from it. We can subscribe to events from it, and we can give you the same functionality that you saw today. Um, so whether that's something as simple as simple storage um, or something more complex um, um, that you have custom built for your use case, the platform can handle it um, in this same flow, can work with it. I hope this was helpful. Um, thank you for taking the time. And if there are any questions that have come out of this, please don't hesitate to reach out to the team. You can submit a contact us form to us and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you.